Hello, I'm Andrew Walsh. This is a version of a talk that I'm giving at the fourth International Conference on Higher Education Advances in Valencia in June 2018. So this is a separately recorded thing that covers almost identically the material that I'll cover during that conference. So as I say, I'm Andrew Walsh. I'm a teaching fellow at the University of Huddersfield and also an academic librarian there. I work part-time at the University of Huddersfield, but also part-time for myself, doing training and writing and publishing and all sorts of other bits and pieces that I feel of interest at the time, really. Uh, so there's some of my job titles, but my most important job title was given to me by my daughter a year or so ago. She was talking to her friends at school about what their parents did. And when it got on to her and uh, giving them an idea of what I did, she said, my dad is a librarian who teaches grown-ups how to play. So I thought, I like that. So I'm now a playbrarian as well. A librarian who teaches grown-ups how to play. So, giving permission to play in higher education. So, why am I thinking about these sort of things? Well, I, I won't talk a lot about the benefits of play. The, the several other game-based learning type sessions at this conference. Uh, but I'm thinking about it because I do play a lot in the things I do. And I do see play as having lots of benefits. Uh, I use it a lot in my work and especially running workshops people will talk to me afterwards and they'll say oh yeah you know that that approach seems really interesting and it's okay for you but it wouldn't work with my students or it wouldn't work in the context that I'm working in or with the groups that I have or whatever excuses they come up with now I'd never say you should use play because I'd never say any one particular approach is the right approach that everyone should follow. But it became increasingly clear to me that the reason people were saying these sort of things to me was nothing to do with play itself as an approach or to do with the subjects they were looking after. It was to do with those people feeling that they had permission to use play and their students feeling like they had permission to learn through play. It was to do with permission rather than anything else. That idea that they were allowed to act in playful ways through education. Now, that's quite understandable. Because <clears throat> public play is a political act. When you choose to play in public, it demonstrates to people watching an attitude towards life, towards education, towards society. It's an attitude that tends towards experimentation, challenge, social fairness, and embracing of the power of fun. As an adult, it exposes you in ways that people often aren't comfortable with. The might be seen as more acceptable for children instead. And I'll come on to why in a moment. So we do need permission to play, both permission from ourselves as individuals and from others around us as well. Once we start playing, things aren't too bad because any public demonstration and, and signalling of play does invite others to play alongside you. Whether that's directly in that act themselves or through other playful activities that might echo that. It gives others implicit permission to play in their turn. And that permission, publicly given or given to that player to themselves, is a critical factor in enabling play. Now... I've spent a fair amount of time talking to people about play over the last few years through my own journey through this. Um, in particular, playful learning in post-compulsory session, uh, compuls post-compulsory learning, uh, because I deal with adult learners. And permission to play comes up regularly 
but no one really seems to have a handle on it and what permission to play means or structures in which we can think and view this idea of permission to play that, that everyone seems to agree it's necessary uh, all the sort of play and game based learning scholars I, uh, I talk to so I've been thinking about this uh, over the last couple of years and I'm currently looking at this idea of permission to play through the work of Goffman now Goffman talked about sociological frames affecting how we play our part in any social situation these frames are how we see situations and adapt our behavior to suit it so for example in in a talk like this at a conference or in particular in edu higher education in universities if we as a learner walk into a lecture theater and someone with who seems to have authority is stood at the front with slides at the ready like we've got here and we probably sat in rows as well in lecture theatres though we might be around tables that sort of setting will give us the expectation that we're meant to sit still and be quiet and passively passively absorb the information and that the person in front is the expert and our voice has less import we're less likely to offer value because they're the expert at the front if we act in ways that are different to those expectations set up then according to goffman we'll feel embarrassment and the people around us will feel embarrassment as well because we've broken the unspoken rules of that frame we've stood out from the crowd we haven't conformed in a way that would be expected of us so there's lots of signals that will set up an expectation of how you behave uh, in a situation that will set the the frame that you're looking at it through people through verbal and non-verbal communication can key shifts in the frame and this keying will happen regularly in social situations including the keying of playful behavior as well although it doesn't happen so much within education because we don't think in these ways normally so if we want to use playful learning approaches we need to consciously be aware of this and to build this keying of playful behavior into our teaching and into the settings in which we operate or people will feel awkward or embarrassed to play even if we give explicit permission so if we say right now we're going to play this learning game without other signals it may feel inappropriate behavior to the learners who will fail to give themselves permission to play so a really obvious example of this that i see is people picking up some of the games or activities that i've created and dropping that within their normal teaching so their normal teaching will set up expectations of how the students behave and then they try and switch suddenly to a more playful behavior and switch back and it's really hard for people to take those signals and to gain that permission to play uh, so i do give lots of examples of this in the written paper and some more information around frames and keying and all this sort of stuff but i've also tried to build a tiny little bit of it into this talk so the language i've used the way i've defined myself at the start as a play brarian uh, these sort of things try to give implicit permission in the conference session itself i'll do a playful activity throughout the session and at the start give them explicit permission to play as well during that uh, as part of that activity all these are sort of little keys little clues that it's okay to play in this situation even though the standard setting suggests otherwise 
in the teaching I do a lot more I give as much help as I can to my learners to shift the frame they see themselves in from a didactic sort of traditional higher education situation into a playful creative collaborative one as I say more examples of this are in the written paper so I'm presenting this mainly because I'm really interested in whether people see this as a, a sensible way of thinking about playful activities and giving permission to play uh, or giving permission to use creativity and creative approaches in higher education before I go further down this route. So thank you for listening. These are the, uh, the video version of the slides, but the slides and the full paper are available at the osf.io URL on this final slide here. You can get hold of me various ways, as you can see up there, as well as going to those uh, web addresses to see some of the other bits and pieces I've done. Thank you, and goodbye.